Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Bias 3D webinar. Thank you for joining us today to talk about some new and very exciting changes um, made to DeSoe's licensing for various simulation tools across multiple domains. And um, I would like to just start by saying this should be a short webinar, and it's a little bit sales focused, uh, but we're going to use an application for the automotive industry to go through the technical presentations. But for now, I'm going to begin and set the stage. My name is Derek Nunes, and I am a global sales manager here at Bias 3D. Um, after I start us off, we're going to go to Victor Martinez, uh, who's an FBA engineer specializing in structural simulation then go to Yushi Tan, our EMAG technical manager, and then end with Murthy, uh, our CFD applications director. Um, so let's get going. Uh, very quickly, uh, Vias 3D is a platinum partner of Dassault Systems. Uh, if you're listening to this webinar, you're probably familiar with Dassault Systems that make a lot of different technology software. We have been around for about 10 years or so and very quickly um, have grown. Uh, so we're about over 200 people now. So we're a global organization and our company founders and leadership are either former Dassault system software power users or executives and leadership at Dassault. Um, and there's many things that Bias 3D likes to focus on. I just chose my three um, of why I think we very much deserve to be a platinum partner. Um, we really try and find out what the customer's goals are um, and make sure they get the best support, uh, act as a trusted partner where uh, if you have a deadline and there's something extremely important, you're gonna be able to get a hold of us. We're always there, an email or a call away uh, and technical superiority to hit upon that, um, that piece in particular, uh, technical superiority in domains like mod sim, simulation and modeling and product lifecycle management, manufacturing, all of that requires a ton of expertise in many different areas, which is why we have three presenters coming after me today. Um, and we pride ourselves on trying to get the best technical, um, the best technical people here at Vias 3D. Uh, so moving on. The purpose of this webinar today, uh, I wrote up this little paragraph, is essentially to discuss how companies can best design, engineer complex products in a fast, reliable, cost-effective way uh, with a focus on scientific simulation today, because that was the change that was made recently that we're here to talk about. But really, that's what we're here for, to help you build things better, help you understand your products early on. Uh, to go to market faster and be more cost effective with your designs, engineering, manufacturing, and prototyping. Um, here are a few terms just to keep in mind for this webinar. Uh, Dassault Systems is very big on something called mod sim, um, modeling and simulation as one, uh, where they're obviously different tools, but we want to start connecting them as much as possible. If, if you've heard of SOLIDWORKS before, many of the tools we're going to talk about today have parametric links with SOLIDWORKS that automatically work if they're installed on the same machine. Um, uh, or if it's CATIA, whatever it may be, having the modeling and the simulation engineers work together in a seamless way uh, really is the future. and uh, that is through the use of virtual twins, just representations of the real world uh, entity systems. Uh, digital twins is, was a, a term that was used a lot, but that refers more to design and modeling. Virtual twins encompass the simulation portion of that, where you're not just um, getting the CAD model, you're knowing how it's affected by the environment and various scenarios. Uh, collaboration, I'm quickly going to talk about the 3DX platform, um, uh, as well as flexibility is a huge part of this webinar today, um, especially for the existing customers of either CST, 
abacus or power flow this is going to be huge for any company that is a siloed workflow where they're using different tools that are completely separate renewals things like that this is how we combine everything um, so of course multidisciplinary across all those domains of physics um, and just a term called complete technology you know when you have the best in class end-to-end -end engineering tools all in one unified environment that's the future that's where comp that's where everyone would like to go no one wants to work in a siloed fashion so um, so sim units sru these are some things that you may have never heard of before uh, for example an electrical engineer would come and buy cst they know they want to build an antenna simple enough then the structural structural engineer uh, wants to do some drop testing on a phone or crash testing on a car he goes and buys abacus for a separate group then another department of the same company wants to do aeroacoustics um, or fluid simulation all of those tools offered by the same company to so systems are just have been point solutions completely separate sim units or sru um, really what that means is all of the simulation tools are combined together you can use the interface of the tools that you're used to whether it's cst abacus power flow whatever it is but the actual solve power to either run concurrent jobs or access more hardware is governed by sru which are tokens that can say you can use up to two gpus and run cst or abacus or you can use four gpus and just one job it's extremely flexible where multiple different departments uh, for the price very close to what the cost of just one of those tools was last year. Now you can get all three and really work in unison. Now you know what tools the departments are using because eventually when you get to the end of the design, you need everyone collaborating. Um, and it's just easy and a very powerful way to um, save some money and get all the Dassault system solutions that you would want. Now quickly on the 3D experience platform, all of this is available on the 3DX platform. That is Dassault's mission statement. It's the only true platform there is. It's yeah, with other companies that design that have software to help engineer tools and organize your company. Um, it's not truly using unified data or as a digital thread um, or as a single unified environment. It's still siloed and you're still trying to get this file into this format so you can get it to this person. It's not just a true platform where everything is seamless. The 3DX platform truly is seam seamless. It incorporates a digital thread for end-to-end -end traceability. It's secure real-time collaboration and unified data um, so everyone's using that single source of truth and um, I don't think it should be called a platform unless you can actually do that so they have a platform why simulation this is quick uh, for anyone who has done simulation before um, it's about four things primarily you want to reduce risk avoiding you know avoiding late stage failure you might know that yes this antenna will work in this place or if i uh, use this pcb board you know the rule of thumb should be fine uh, but you never want to get to market and find out that your product isn't working you know it, or never want to get close to going to market and find out you have to go back to the drawing board because you made a mistake early on it's about understanding your designs, knowing how they'll function early um, so that you can engineer the best products and the, the best products with the least amount of actual physical prototyping. Uh, and that inherently uh, having simulation increases the speed at which you can, you can design and you can prototype because you can do it virtually as well. It also allows you to be more cutting edge and take more chances because physical testing is extremely expensive and time consuming. So uh, it's very hard to justify doing something crazy when it's going to cost that much money. And obviously it lowers the cost. The more physical testing you have to do, the more expensive it is, 
the more time it takes. Um, and that obviously is not what anyone wants. So you can be more innovative, do more rapid testing. I like to call it the build, test, tweak workflow for engineering that has existed for a long time. You can still do that, but you can just do it virtually, share it with everyone across all the domains that we're talking about today. Uh, and then of course, regulatory compliance, whether it's for fluids, structural, uh, electromagnetics. If you are not compliant, you are not getting your product to market and that is not good for anyone. So no one wants to find out that at the end, they're not compliant and have to go back and change their designs from the from scratch. So really quickly, virtual and physical prototyping, you have to do physical prototyping. You need real world measurement. It's absolutely necessary. But like I said, it's expensive, time consuming and risky if you haven't looked at future scenarios um, to try and avoid late stage failure. Uh, some some objections I hear about uh, a simulation and why some companies won't invest very heavily into it is they think they need a lot of expertise. Is it really apples to apples with the real world as far as accuracy? Uh, and I can tell you right now that, that the nothing is as accurate as real world measurement, but if you set up the models correctly, then you can truly do a virtual twin and understand how your product's gonna act. What's gonna happen if you do this? Uh, so you can do faster prototyping, lower your costs and take more risks. So there's a lot of different simulation tools we could talk about. There's so much that Dassault sells. That would be a three hour webinar. But for today, we're gonna talk about these three, the primary ones, Abacus for structural simulation, CST for electromagnetic simulation, and uh, a few different ones for CFD, uh, power flow and FMK specifically. The true thesis of this is you're gonna have, if you go with SRU and SIM units, this was not available until extremely recently. You can have every tool in the toolbox that your engineering teams will need so they can work together and share the licenses across each other. Uh, so when one team is not using it, the other can pick it up. Um, and just to set the stage for Victor, now we're gonna go through all three tools. It's gonna to go Victor to talk about Abacus, usually talk about CST and then ends with our um, CFD technical director, Murthy. We're gonna be using an automotive example to be carried throughout to keep some consistency. Uh, and on that note, I'm gonna hand it off to Victor. All right. Okay, thanks, Eric. Um, all right, so as Derek mentioned, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Abacus. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Okay, so Abacus is the finite element software package from Simulia. And with this tool, you can perform many types of analysis involving multiple physics. And I think it can be easier to understand if we divide it in its three models. The first one is Abacus CA which is the user interface. And in here, the user can perform pre-processing operations like geometry creation, meshing, loads, and boundary conditions, but also post-processing operations in order to visualize the results and some scripting is also possible. Now, Abacus Standard, uh, well, Abacus uh, has two solvers. The first one is Abacus Standard. And this one is uh, general for general purpose analysis, like static and dynamic analysis being both linear and non-linear scenarios. And we can also analyze multiple physics like heat transfer, acoustics, fracture mechanics, or even pore pressure. And the second solver of Abacus is Abacus Explicit. This one is mainly used for high-speed dynamic events, such as drop testing, mainly for gadgets like consumer electronics, but also for aut automotive crashworthiness and ballistic impact. So a great feature that Abacus Explicit has is that it handles very well the severely non-linear behavior, such as high-speed contact. And these two, well, Abacus can deal with these two solvers, uh, very complex and difficult problems, thanks to these uh, algorithms. And some key benefits are that it can, it, it can analyze complex materials in complex assemblies. You can study the contact fracture and failure. You can make use also of high-performance computing, if available. And using Abacus CA, you can uh, prepare your models and interpret 
and make some results interpretation. So th these are some main key benefits that are contained in Abacus. Now, I want to show you yeah, some examples uh, in the automotive industry using Abacus. And as I was mentioning, mentioning uh, we can perform crash worthiness tests using Abacus Explicit. This model contains more than 55,000 elements and we can not, not only um, finite elements, but also connector elements that are modeling the kinematic constraints between, between the, the components of the car, of this pickup tr uh, truck. And this, ca this kind of test can be performed both in the whole model or in just a subsystem. So in this case, we, were, we only an analyzed the side impact of the door with a pole. And by default, we can get uh, the results that we can get are the stresses and displacements. But, we, but if we can have more information on the material or in this over, of the scenario, we can also go, obtain different results like fracture mechanics or stiffness degradation of this component. And also the contact behavior between all the little components and connectors and elements of the door is possible as well. Okay, but also uh, it is not only limited these kind of tests, they are not only limited to the behavior of the components. We can also analyze how the passengers interact with the vehicle during a crash. So for example, we have like here three examples. On the top right, we have the side curtain impact test. So in here, we can evaluate the damage of the passenger's head, but also we can evaluate how the airbag is being deployed. And to do that, we use a capability called fluid cavity which is uh, used to model a fluid field structure where we define the pressure inside a closed region. So in the, in the bottom left, we have also another example. It's the impact of a knee bolster. And with this, we can perform these scenarios in order to ensure that the, the, the knees of the passenger are not impacting against a hard surface once the crash occurs. And also, we can uh, evaluate the performance of a seat belt in order to ensure that it stays in tension during a crash, but also that the pressure over the chest of a passenger is not high. So this, this type of uh, analysis were also performed in Abacus Explicit because they are high-speed dynamic events, and that's a very great scenario for Abacus Explicit. OK, and finally, other types of uh, advanced simulations that can be performed in the automotive industry are in the field of the noise vibration and harshness, or NVH. And this is an important aspect that customers can take into consideration because a customer wouldn't want a vehicle that either vibrates too much or makes a lot of noise. So one type of analysis that we can perform in here is a brake squeal analysis. And in order to do that, we can perform a complex eigenvalue extraction to identify the unstable modes that originate, originate this squeal noise. We can also perform steady state analysis when we have our harmonic responses in the same frequency as the applied harmonic loads. And also we can perform base motion excitation uh, studies where in this case, we're, um, to see how the vehicle suspensions are responding to road irregularities. And we have two examples in here. The uh, first one is the primary base motion when all the supports, or in this case, the wheels, are subjected to the same motion. But also we can have a secondary base motion when the wheels or supports have different base motion. So these types of scenarios or analysis can be performed with Abacus standard, which is the general purpose solver for Abacus. And with this, I am going to hand it off to my colleague, Jushitan, which is the EMAC technical manager. All right, thank you, Vector. Just let me see if I have control. So there, can you give me control? All right, so I think I do have control now. All right, so changing gear a little bit, we're going to hear uh, talk about CST. So basically everything when it comes to EMAC, right, electromagnetics. So here's a pretty good slide basically encompassing what CST covers. 
So there are five main uh, application areas that uh, a lot of these electromagnetic problems uh, fall under. So the first one on the, let's say the top right corner, we have a microwave and our RF uh, slash optical. So here are the corresponding solvers that you would typically use for uh, high frequency uh, problems. Uh, let's say antennas, um, high-speed components, interconnects comes to mind. And uh, you would, uh, for a lot of CSC users, you would probably recognize some of the solver icons, mainly the time domain solver, the frequency domain solver. Now, moving on to the lower uh, right a little bit, uh, you have the EDA electronics. So all these uh, components have something in common. They either produce uh, electricity or consume electricity. So we talk about electronic devices, right? So EDA um, and electronics area also take, make use of the time domain and frequency domain solver if we're talking about full 3D. So the reason to do stuff in full 3D is to capture all the um, mechanisms, coupling mechanisms that you would encounter. So radiation comes into mind. If you are just analyzing the, the problem in 2D, uh, you probably don't need to worry about radiation much, but uh, in practice, you do have to um, deal with these uh, radiation problems. So moving on to the lower, um, the bottom over here in EMC, EMI, when you have a lot of these systems placed in a close proximity, you would have interference between one system or another, or you know, one subsystem to another subsystem. So it's very important to study the relationship between them to make sure that they are uh, able to operate together at the same time. So that is an area of uh, electromagnetic compatibility or interference uh, area. So when you will use the same uh, time domain and frequency domain software to capture all the radiation and I should say all the coupling mechanisms uh, on, of the, on these different systems. Now, CSC also covers the uh, particle dynamics um, when it comes to charged particles. So you have various solvers to tackle this type of problem. Uh, this is somewhat of a niche market, but uh, just keep in mind that CSD can do that as well. So last but not least, uh, the statics, when it comes to statics and also low frequency applications. So it's the same set of equations we're basically solving in the background, but uh, the difference is that uh, efficiency, right? Uh, when it comes to select solvers, they run faster because you can decouple certain aspects of the simulation by using a subset of the equations. And if the equation is not as complex, you get a solution a lot quicker. So looking at this pie chart, it really covers from uh, DC or zero hertz all the way up to optical frequencies in the terahertz range. So what, whatever problem you have, you can use CST to tackle it. And on the bottom right, we see a couple uh, a few of these uh, solvers that are not really belonging to the main chart over here. So that is an extension of um, the capability of CST. So typically CST addresses the antenna, um, microwave component, uh, electronics devices area, but with these devices consume electricity, they heat up, right? And then potentially deform uh, the, the structure and impact the electromagnetic performance. So that's why we have the CHT solver, uh, conjugate heat transfer, uh, the thermal steady state, and the thermal transient solver uh, as an add-on to, to this. I mean, your, your base package comes with all these solver technologies. So over 20 some application specific uh, solvers to tackle whatever problems you have when it comes to electromagnetics. So it's really a complete technology portfolio that we are offering in CST Studio Suite. Now, on top of that, you also have um, additional tools that will make your life a little easier. So let's say you are dealing with um, um, EDA files in uh, 2D. You can import those into CST and turn them into a 3D model. And you can analyze the, the PCB just like any 3D structure. So all mechanisms will be taken into account because you're solving the model in full 3D. Now, when it comes to simulation, a lot of times it's really beneficial to speed up the simulation uh, using, uh, let's say, hardware uh, like GPUs. So the speed up factor can range from four to eight. It's a great uh, difference between uh, getting a solution in a week compared to getting it in a day or a few hours. So we also have additional tools like Opera 2D. Uh, if you are dealing with motor design and stuff like that, uh, it would be really uh, quick. Uh, in the initial cross-section design so that you can save you know, time and run additional iterations to perfect your uh, cross-section and then moving on to uh, building up the, uh, the uh, full model. 
Now, Antenna Magazine is basically an antenna library for uh, antenna engineers and also people who do not uh, deal with antennas on a daily basis, but they just want to quickly grab an antenna and just place it on the, the system to see how it performs. Uh, a lot of times you are given a, an antenna instead of designing your own from a supplier. So that would be uh, really useful. Now, Filter Designer 3D, um, it basically designs this uh, 3D filters really easily from scratch. Um, now, Eden Builder is a really good way to make sure that your model uh, that you're dealing with is causal and uh, passive. Now, Spark 3D and Fast 3D are specialized tools to help with, um, let's say, um, RF breakdown components. Let's say space applications come to mind. Um, now, Fast 3D is a tool to uh, quickly synthesize and also analyze the waveguide components. So with the new licensing, you have all these at your disposal. Everything is, you know, included, right? So next, we're going to highlight some of the, um, the key areas uh, when it comes to CST, uh, mainly in the high-tech area. We're going to stay with the same theme, uh, kind of close to the automotive TNM industry. Now here, we are looking at the uh, cell phone design. And uh, in the middle, we see that the glass design uh, we can include um, the different layers of the, what different thickness of the glass uh, close to the antenna. And that would change the performance. So this um, design stage, you can explore a lot of alternate solutions by varying the, um, the size and the shape of this glass and also the thickness of it. So they can gotta get the, the best performance and you can run a lot of these design of experiment um scenarios to make the um to optimize the um design before you move on to production so what's the impact of this thickness of the uh, the glass for example so we are looking at two different scenarios over here so the top right we see the red circle or the red um outline and that is without the lens so basically just a flat glass and here we can see that the, the return loss is not quite good in the operating frequency, let's say 28 gigahertz, right, uh, for the, one of the 5G bands. Now, if we change the shape or the thickness of this glass backing, now with a lens in, right, now we can see that the return loss improved dramatically. And the same thing can, can be seen in the efficiency plot. Uh, when we talk about total efficiency, now with the lens, it's way higher compared to the, the, the model without the lens. So a lot of these design of experiment um, scenarios can be um, looked at to get the most optimal design before you move on to uh, building your first prototype. Okay, so now what regula uh, regulatory compliance uh, is also a very important area because without it, you cannot market or and sell your device, right? So on the left over here, we have a human mo body model uh, basically a, a human phantom uh, model uh, with a foam held next to it and you can kind of see that the fields penetrate into the phantom model uh, meaning that the the tissue is going to absorb some of that energy right this energy needs to be below a certain limit to pass the regulatory compliance uh, requirement and uh, the fields at um, this fr uh, frequency, uh, we're looking at uh, somewhat of a low frequency, right? So that's why the fields can penetrate into it. So 3.6 gigahertz. And on the right, uh, we see that the fields gonna behave very differently uh, at 28 gigahertz, one of the 5G frequency bands. And uh, you see that the most of the energy is really on just the surface uh, of the, um, the, the phantom head model instead of penetrating into it. So with that, it comes with new set of requirements. So in simulation, you can basically get all these scenarios looked at and um, come up with the best solution uh, for that specific um, uh, design that you are working with. Okay, now, now staying on the same theme uh, in the uh, TNM industry when it comes to a automobile, uh, the one of the workhorse uh, that works really hard is the uh, the DC DC converter. Basically, converting your 12 volt battery voltage to your USB devices that operates at five volts. And uh, in the design stage, you can work with uh, many different uh, iterations. Uh, you can change the design layout. And on the top right over here, we see that that's the initial design. But this design creates a lot of um, uh, current uh, and kind of encompassing a, a big loop where the current flows, right? Now, if you're trying to limit this current uh, loop uh, size, 
you can alter the design so that um, the current flows um, in a smaller loop, less, you know, hence creating less emission. So all this is kind of tied to the regulatory compliance um, uh, aspect. Uh, this is referred to as conducted emission uh, for any electronic devices, basically saying that your um, emission coming from the conduction path should not affect other uh, parts of the system. So that's what we have here. So a simulation allows you to do this all in one. And then some of the, here are just some of the examples that you can do in CSD tying to this uh, specific uh, area. And uh, staying on this theme and uh, looking at the mod original design and the modified design, you can kind of see that the modified design has a lot lower emission compared to the uh, original design. And uh, that is because the current loop is uh, greatly reduced um, when it comes to the um, emission um, level. All right, so moving on to a more system level uh, approach. Uh, if we're analyzing a car, if we have some kind of um, wireless charging system in there, you need to worry about the occupant uh, safety. And it, it, does not, it cannot have too much uh, energy uh, getting into the human body, right? So like, like we talked about the, uh, the phantom model a little earlier. Now, full system level uh, analysis can be done in CST as well. So that's just one example of it. And if you want to have the human model uh, in the um, entire system, there are postable models, uh, bio models available for you to post uh, it accordingly so, so that you can get the most uh, realistic scenario simulated. So I think that's all I have to talk about today. So with that, I'm going to pass it on to my colleague, Amuthi, to talk about the uh, CFD application. Thanks, Yushi. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Murthy. Um, yeah, this is Murthy, uh, CFT Director at YS3D. I'll cover the DSCFT portfolio today. Um, so going to the next slide. Uh, now, DS is committed to enhancing the fluid simulation portfolio uh, with three major complementary technologies, uh, PowerFlow, XFlow, and fluid role on the 3D experience platform uh, that Derek mentioned uh, in earlier slides. CFT solution on 3D experience enables multi-scale, multi-physics applications by integrating CFT with design, simulation, optimization, data management, and business intelligence applications. In addition to these three powerful tools, the plastic injection engineer role is also available on the platform to cover plastic solutions. So uh, come, going to the next slide. Uh, so here we talk about uh, world leading lattice Boltzmann CFD solver, PowerFlow, which is uh, you know used for modeling high fidelity physics. It comes with a powerful product suit uh, with tools like Power Delta, Power Therm, Power Acoustics, and Power Insight for you know, geometry modifications, thermal analysis, acoustics, design optimization, etc. PowerFlow comes with automated workflow templates for various uh, uh, TNM and AND applications like aerodynamics, acoustics, underhood cooling analysis, etc. Uh, PowerFlow is a complete cloud solution, uh, so no investment in hardware is needed. Uh, going to the next slide, FMK, uh, to, now we talk about FMK. FMK is a CAD and PLM embedded CFT tool for designers and analysts. Uh, in FMK, you know, with one click, the user can update all the design changes in the simulation model. The automatic fluid domain extraction and guided user interface help non-CFD experts to set up the model quickly and more accurately. FMK's unified workflow allows to quickly set up conjugate heat transfer scenarios and also allows parametric design studies uh, uh, to be executed with a very few clicks. The RANS-based FMK solver covers a wide range of industry applications, including compressible, incompressible flows, all three modes of heat transfer with uh, conjugate heat transfer applications, three surface flows, Newtonian, non-Newtonian flows, uh, moving reference frames for revolving bodies uh, and porous media, et cetera. Uh, going to the la last slide in the CFT portfolio, uh, here we cover uh, the other two DS CFT solutions called XFlow and plastic injection. 
Explo is uh, also a lattice Boltzmann based safety solver uh, for multi phase simulations. This application is great for gearbox lubrication uh, analysis. The plastic injection solution on 3D Experience platform uh, has an easy to use workflow with a guided user interface for plastic, uh, for modeling plastic injection applications. It has a wide range of database with more than 2,400 polymer materials, and the solver supports both filling and uh, packing processes. With this, I, I will conclude my part of providing a high-level uh, view on the DSCFT portfolio. Uh, Derek will conclude the webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Murthy. Thank you, Victor. Thank you, Yushi. Um, just as a closing statement before I check if we have any questions, um, the point of this webinar is a lot of you listening to this have already used point solutions here, CST, PowerFlow, FMK, Abacus, um, in different departments, totally unaware of each other. Um, but everyone's buying different to sell products, whether it's Katia, simulation, all those things. The trend continues to be bundling and packaging and making sure there's a ton of interoperability, parametric links, because the 3DX platform is definitely the future. So they're already simplifying that to, to so systems is to make sure that engineering groups can collaborate and that we start working in a new way instead of Excel spreadsheets, things like that. We're gonna use unified data. We're gonna use simulation tools, all best in class. That's based off one license. That's more advantageous to get more hardware and users. Um, so I think this is very exciting for anyone who does simulation or modeling um, or is looking to manage data and get a unified environment within their company. So. Uh, let's see if we have any questions. Um, we have a few questions. Are the front ends interchangeable? I think someone is asking um, if you can just, if, if you buy SRU, can you use all three tools? The only um, caveat to this is you need to buy the front end for either Abacus, CST, or PowerFlow, whatever that may be, uh, which is a small portion of the cost. Um, SRU is the solve tokens and the uh, hardware access tokens, which can be exchanged and interchanged for various amounts of hardware and which tool you want to use. Um, is CST completely on the 3D experience platform? Yushi, can you help me with that? Um, yes, yeah. so, I think yes. it's powered by. It. I don't know. Right. So right now, CST is not completely on the platform yet. So the ultimate vision would be to just run these simulations from your web browser, right? Let's say you're on your iPad and you just uh, if you you know clicks and you'll be able to do a lot of these simulations in on the cloud and then you get the the result back uh, to let's say to display on your iPad, right? So that's the ultimate vision. But right now, it's not quite there yet. So CST has what's called a power by solution at the moment. So the back end um, is actually on the, the the model solve is actually done on the cloud. So you you can model the um, your um, the project uh, on your front end. Um, there are various options available as well. So after you're done with the modeling, you submit the job to the cloud, and then you will solve it, and then you get the result back, and then you analyze it. So that's a power by solution at the moment. I mean, we do see technologies being migrated to the platform, you know, every year. So in 2024 is just around the corner. So I, we we expect more changes coming that way. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, there were no more questions, so. Thank you to everyone who joined. Thank you to everyone listening later. Um, and if you have any questions at all about this licensing, pricing, whatever that may be, uh, please reach out to us um, at vias 3 d vias 3 dcom Send us a note uh, or give us a call and we would love to chat about it. So thank you very much. And uh, this concludes the webinar. <laughs>